Greetings and welcome to another edition of The Great Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Praise be to Goddess. Well, Wednesday is almost here and I'm making my video a day early so that I'll be ready for to spend the whole of Wednesday with my family. It's Goddess Worshippers Thanksgiving, a fitting end to our Harvest Moon Festival. Yes, it's a sad thing. The Harvest Moon Festival is drawing to a close and it's drawing to an end for, for the uh, first, first time this year. <laughs> it's drawing to an end, but not for the first time ever. It's, it's a very sad event to have the end of our Harvest Moon Festival, but we enjoyed it. We spent it with friends and family. We showed off our skills. We, a skill that we learned during the summer, we showed off our skills. And now, now it's time for us to celebrate a Goddess Worshippers Thanksgiving to kick off the end of our Harvest Moon Festival. Now, some of you are wondering, what can I eat? What can I eat that's that during a Goddess Worshippers Thanksgiving? Isn't that supposed to be vegan? Well, yes, it is vegan. It's a vegan feast. And we have it once a year. You can have anything you want. You can even have spaghetti if that's what you like. But uh, I celebrate with a more traditional meal. I have a vegan loaf. And it's a loaf that, it's not a loaf of bread. It's packed with veggies and lentils and all sorts of nutrients. So it's a... It's kind of like a meatloaf, only it's a vegan loaf. And I make it every year, and it substitutes nicely for a turkey. We don't need turkey because we have our vegan loaf. And there's several recipes out there for vegan loaves. So you can look around for one that suits your fancy. And that's the center of the meal. But we also have other things like mushroom gravy. Mushroom gravy, very tasty and all vegan. No, uh, no beef broth in our, in our or uh, chicken or turkey broth in our uh, vegan mushroom gravy. And I also like to make mashed potatoes and add a little bit of margarine and a little bit of... Uh, um, milk to it, uh, not not cow's milk, but almond milk or soy milk. You can take your pick, or you can use rice milk if if it suits your fancy. And then um, there's dessert. And this year, um, I have a recipe to share with you. Um, it's for a vegan pumpkin pie, but that's that's up ahead. I'm I'm getting to that. I also like to make um, a green bean casserole, and green bean casserole is very simple. But usually they throw in uh, mushroom mushroom soup. Mushroom soup is used to make. Uh, uh, green bean casserole, but you have to substitute something for that. You can't have dairy in there. So to substitute for the dairy, I make my green bean casserole from scratch using ingredients like mushrooms and uh, coconut oil and um, a few other ingredients that I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but uh, a little bit of a little bit of almond milk. It's good. It's really good. And uh, 
put crunchy onions on top of that. I know you can get crunchy onions at the grocery store. Um, not sure if they're vegan, but it just wouldn't be wouldn't be a green bean casserole without crispy onions. And uh, also, um, I like to make uh, s sweet candied yams, sweet potatoes covered with marshmallows, and that that's always a good dish. I be sure to buy vegan marshmallows because regular marshmallows are made with gelatin and gelatin comes from a cow's hoof. So you don't want gelatin in there. You want vegan marshmallows. So you can get vegan marshmallows at your friendly Whole Foods market or you can get them at at uh, some sort of some sort of co-op or specialty health food store, but you, definitely Whole Foods carries them. So just just so you know, vegan marshmallows. Vegan marshmallows, very essential ingredient in candied yams or sweet potatoes. So that is that that is all now. There will be a brief intermission and then I will I will definitely share the the um, vegan pumpkin pie recipe with you. Okay, part two of our video. And now I'm going to share with you a vegan pumpkin pie recipe as promised. This is from the Food Network. All you have to do is go to foodnetwork.com for this and other fine recipes. Here it is, vegan pumpkin pie. One and a half cups all-purpose flour, one tablespoon granulated sugar, one tablespoon white vinegar, salt, optional, half a cup virgin coconut oil, packed, and four to six teaspoons of, uh, tablespoons rather, four to six tablespoons of ice water. For the filling, one 15 ounce canned pumpkin puree, eight ounces of silken tofu, silken tofu, very important. You don't want the chunky stuff or the extra firm. You don't want that. Two thirds of a cup granulated sugar, two tablespoons cornstarch, one teaspoon cinnamon, half a teaspoon nutmeg, half a teaspoon vanilla extract, and a quarter of a teaspoon of salt, also optional. For the crust, put the flour, sugar, vinegar, and half a teaspoon of salt, optional, in a food processor and pulse to combine. Add the coconut oil in small spoonfuls and pulse until the largest pieces are pea-sized. Add four tablespoons ice water, pulse until evenly combined. Squeeze a handful of dough. It should just hold its shape. If not, add an additional one to two tablespoons of ice water. Turn dough out onto a large piece of plastic wrap, pat into a half inch thick disc, and chill in the refrigerator at least one hour or overnight. Now, from what I read of the reviews, I would not recommend chilling it overnight. So you wanna work with it after one hour just after one hour. To make rolling easier, let soften 20 to 40 minutes at room temperature before rolling. Very important step, you don't wanna skip. You don't wanna skip the softening part. Roll the disc into a 12 inch round between two pieces of parchment paper. If the dough gets too soft, refrigerate to firm it up. Use the parchment paper to ease the crust into a nine inch pie pan. Fold overhanging dough under and crimp the edges. Chill for 30 minutes. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Line chilled pie crust with parchment paper. Fill with beans as weights. And you don't want to use baked beans out of a can, okay? You want to use 
raw dried beans. Dried beans, and they're they're not part of the recipe. They you use them as weight. Bake blind until edges are golden, 20 to 25 minutes. And everybody knows what baking blind is, right? It's where you it's where you put parchment paper in and you put weights on top of the pie crust and bake it without any filling. That's called baking blind. Okay, 20 to 25 minutes. Remove weights, beans, and parchment paper. Continue baking 15 to 20 minutes more. Let cool completely. For the filling, process the pumpkin puree, tofu, sugar, cornstarch, cinnamon, nutmeg, vanilla, and salt in a food processor until completely smooth, scraping down the sides of the bowl as needed. Pour the filling into the par-baked pie shell and bake until firm and set, 40 to 45 minutes. I always protect the edge of the crust with aluminum foil, and you can do this. You can take strips of aluminum foil, make make the aluminum foil into strips, and just uh, put it onto the pie crust all around so that the crust is protected from, from uh, the heat. Let cool completely on a rack. Oh, bake until firm and set 40 to 45 minutes. Let cool completely on a rack. Chill for at least two hours or overnight. Slice and serve with whipped coconut cream. And it's very simple to make whipped coconut cream. You just take some coconut cream out of a coconut cream can. Add sugar. Powdered sugar is the easiest to use. You can use any kind of sugar. And beat it until peaks form. So stiff peaks form so you can have whipped topping completely natural no nothing artificial and tastes great on your pumpkin pie your bacon pumpkin pie so that's it that's that's our video for today enjoy enjoy goddess worshipers thanksgiving and i will too and i'll see you next time